Hello and welcome to part two of creating vignettes using ellipse or uh, box masks in Blender. In part one, we created this image right here, a simple vignette uh, having a darkening around the four corners using an ellipse or the box. I'm going to take it a step further in this tutorial and show you how to add textures as well as color to the original vignette. So uh, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in the Blender Compositor, and as you can see, I have already rendered my scene as well as set up all the nodes. That's just to make it easier to explain. So the first thing we're going to look at is the uh, Vignette node group. and It has a Vignette Strength option and an Ellipse Box uh, option, as well as, the, of course, the Image Input. Alright, so everything minus this Mix node is exactly the same for part, uh, from Part 1. You have your ellipse mask or your box mask, and it's being blurred and then multiplied um, on top of your image and blurred by 20% in this case, but it could be whatever you want. And the multiplication factor is the vignette strength. All right, so this mix node is just a uh, mix between the ellipse and the box mask, uh, with zero being the ellipse and then one being the box and uh, 0.5 being. Uh, a mixture of those two at 50% and other values of course are a mixture in case um, uh, it's desired. And that, that's all this uh, simple vignette is. Let's take a look at the advanced one. So again we have an image input, uh, we have the ellipse and the box setting as we did in there, and um, vignette strength as we had here. And the new values are mask value, texture, texture blend, color and color blend. And um, these are, I think that's self-explanatory, just how much texture and how much color is being applied. Okay, so let's look at the, the whole node setup here. Um, so this, 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 and this one right, these nodes right here are same from part one and this one being the same from that previous node group. And the rest does the texture. Texture is being done right over here. And then the color is just a soft light node over here. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the texture one first. And before we can do that, let's uh, grab a texture from cgtextures.com uh, right over here. Uh, and if you scroll down, you could just see there's a grunge link. And from this uh, Grunge link, I have scrolled down and found this texture over here. And this is on page one. Yep, page one. Um, and if we click on it, you get this page. And it's Grunge Maps 0154. And if you get a free account in this uh, with cgtextures.com, you can scroll down and get a uh, small, medium, or large sizes. And large sizes is actually pretty big, um, though it is. 4.6 megabytes, so keep um, keep track of your quota, make sure you don't run out, and if you need more textures. So I have already downloaded this texture, so all I'm going to do is drag and drop it in to the image editor, right over here, now it's in Blender, and I can uh, open it up in this image node right over here. Okay. I can connect the image to the texture slot and um, I can actually see the, the effect it's having. So what's happening is the first uh, the texture is being scaled to our render size. I think it's pretty important though not exactly necessary. And then it goes into this multiplication node right over here. So the purpose of this is to multiply uh, this texture on top of this um, on top of our original vignette to get this effect here. The only problem is that if we just say multiply this image onto our uh, vignette, oh, ignore that. Uh, you would get uh, pretty much uh, the same thing as uh, applying a vignette to an image. You would just get a vignetted uh, texture. What we want is some sort of a uh, factor control. 
And uh, the way we want uh, the factor to work is only apply uh, the texture around where uh, uh, the darker areas are and leave the light areas alone. So we could actually use the same vignette as a factor value. Almost, at least. And if, if you do use it, um, it just uh, it works inversely. So what we got to do is just uh, add an invert node, and uh, boom! Now we have the texture multiplied upon the original vignette with um, with a factor value telling it only multiplying it along the uh, darkened areas. However, this may be too strong. Some people may not need uh, the texture to be as prominent. So what we could do is add a multiply node right over here. And uh, this would just uh, multiply the inversion by a certain amount based on the texture blend um, value right over here. So for example, uh, I could just get rid of this now since we have it over here. Um, this multiply is set with 0.5. So this was the original. This is zero, which just does nothing. And uh, 0.5 just does it at 50%. And of course, any values in between also work fine. So there we go. That's how texture, you can add a texture to the vignette. So let's go to the color. Oops. All right, so I have already two colors set up here. So let's plug in this yellowish orange color into the color slot here. Now it's important to have the default value at 50% gray. It doesn't matter what this color uh, blend uh, slider is. As long as the um, the color is at 50%, you will have the exact same vignette as, um, as this node group. Okay, so let's add the texture back in and add the color into it. And this is what you have um, when you put the color in. So let's jump into the node group. All right, and see what's happening here. So when you finish the vignette, we reached uh, this stage right over here. All you have to do is multiply it around, uh, on top of your original image and get this uh, result here. Uh, and if you want color, now I just put this color inside the vignette just to make it um, a bit easier to work with um, using the color and the color blend, but this could be actually outside because most of the stuff, uh, the texture is actually being applied uh, before we uh, multiplying it on top of our image with this multiply node and then the color is being done after. So this uh, theoretically can be outside of our node group, but I just stuck it in there anyway. So this multiply node again just uh, takes the, your original image input and the vignette, vignette strength value and multiplies them based on that vignette strength value. Okay, and then what we do is send that image to the soft light node and it's a mix node, so color mix and change it from mix to um, up, soft light. There it is. So that's what this is. Um, so you have a, a, some color that's going on the bottom and then you have the original image going into the middle and then you have a blending color value, that's how much color you want, uh, going into the factor value. Now the soft light one is not the only uh, option that you can use. You could also use an overlay right over here and as you can see it's a it, Makes it a bit brighter, kind of mixing uh, than the soft light, and I think you could also use the color one, and this is uh, it's a bit duller. So depending on which effect you're going for, you can change uh, these options over here. I like the soft light as it's uh, a good in-between kind of value uh, to use. Now there's actually one more um, method to add color to your vignette, and that is uh, color RGB curves. You could take that end image, plug it in into the image as well as the factor value, 
And then if we change the R, G, or B uh, curves over here, we can set different colors to it. So this is not as, um, e as easy to do as with the soft light. We could just choose the exact color you want. So here we actually have to play around. So that's why I like the soft light node better. But this works fine too. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's how it works. So uh, I'll, uh, one more thing that I, I am going to do is uh, actually create the image sorry, uh, that, uh, that you saw earlier on the screen uh, by changing these values around. So I'll set up the vignette strength to 1 to actually make the texture uh, more pronounced as it was in the, uh, the image that, that you first saw. And I'll actually decrease this mask value, which I, I forgot to mention. Um, here. So this mask value is just this simple value over here on the ellipse mask. And what it does... So if I set it to... Let's increase this. Move this to the side. So if we change it to a lower value, say 0.1, you can see that it darkens the image or to a value of 0.8. That's uh, what I'm going to use instead of 1. I see it's a, it's a bit too bright, so I'm going to just go uh, tone it down to 8. And it's a, it's a bit more uniform. Also, uh, back from part 1, we did... Uh, let's let's set the viewer here so we can see what's going on. Um, oh, and... Uh, this value here. I'm going to demonstrate again what it does. So 1 is just pure white and 0 is just pure black. 0.5 being 0.5 being uh, gray. So that's that's what that value is doing. That's how so what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, right. So I was going to change these values around uh, like we did in part 1. I'm going to set this value to 0.99. Now, the reason I'm not setting it to 1 is because of this blur node right over here. As you may see, that if I uh, switch it all the way to 1, I, there's uh, some calculation that's going on that makes this pure white but does not change this side. So this side is, uh, keeps uh, its, its gradient that it was at 0.99. So to make them both the same, I'll make it 0.99. So there's a little tip there. The other thing I'm going to do is uh, scale this a little bit on the y-axis to make it uh, more squished, just by a 0.5. And, and, and you'll notice that small values actually change the... Um, the the way that your mask works dramatically. I'm also gonna first of all, just just look at uh, what happened. 0.4 and 0.35, and so a, a bit of a darker feel. And uh, I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. 0.51. I don't like more darkness here since this is the floor and uh, less light over here. So again, this is how you can uh, manipulate your actual vignette. So in, th in this case, it's not even a vignette. Or, well, it's, I guess it's kind of a vignette, uh, but it's, it's it's mostly darkening it on the bottom and on the top. And it's, uh, and it's just um, a matter of preference of what you, what you are working towards. Um, you may need a tight vignette, you may need a, a, a broad, uh, subtle vignette, uh, depends on exactly, again on exactly what your project is, and uh, thus the, the node group here that uh, allows you to change between those two. So right now this looks like um, the intention for me was to create some sort of a, uh, a parchment, uh, old, kind of maybe western uh, wanted kind of wanted a, a poster or uh, uh, maybe like a, a Egyptian uh, parchment uh, I forget what those uh, 
were called, but um, that that's a kind of the goal here. But I found out that with a blue uh, tint right over here, it kind of looks like a frosted. Uh, you get this this frosted effect, like it's wintry and, uh, and snowy, and it's like a, on on you're looking through a window or something like that. And uh, so the way I did the final uh, picture is just using the splitter viewer, and I did. Oops, this goes here. Texture goes in here. Uh. Nope. Ah! Sorry. This image goes in here. Yeah, go. and this is at 47. With this being here, and this being here. There we go. So that's how I split it. Alright, so that's the final result that you saw in the beginning. I hope you learned quite a bit from this tutorial. Um, Especially on uh, node manipulation, multiplying, and whatnot. If if you do have any questions, do post them in the comments. I'll have a Blender Artists forum link uh, down below in the description as well, and uh, I'll have a link to part one um, as well as in, in the description, as well as floating around here somewhere on the on the screen. Alright, this is it, and I will see you next time.